Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. She knew that in the shadow there was a shadow ready to strike. He's planning to murder you. Why? He's been offered $20,000 to kill you. By who? He knew that this blood, this strange trinket, hid a spine-chilling mystery of which he was a part. <coughs> she knew that those footsteps belonged to a man who had been alive and was now perhaps dead. A man who disappeared from the living. I disappeared at the right moment to reappear at the right moment. She had seen him killed, and yet now he was close beside her, haunting her to the point of madness. Her voice, so sweet. Her hand, so perverse. Her body, so sweet, so perverse. Nicole, naked, unknown. Surrounded by vice, violence. <laughs> death, caught in the gears of a monstrous machine that was dragging her down into a bottomless pit. His hands. I'm always ashamed and angry for feeling that excitement. Nicole, so sweet, so perverse. Was he alive, or was he dead? All that he touched was so sweet, so perverse. Danielle, her mind was driven to frenzy, her hands to the blackest crime. She existed in a nightmare of horror and rapture. Even the air she breathed was so sweet, so perverse. No need to ask reasons And welcome back ladies and gents, you just heard the trailer for So Sweet, So Perverse from 1969. This one is disc number 67 in the Italian collection from 88 Films. Now let's give you some of the details as listed on the 88 Films website. 
So Sweet, So Perverse, 1969. Following the international success of Orgasmo, the second Umberto Lenzi slash Carol Baker collaboration is a kinky retelling of Diabolique featuring lush Paris locations, trippy flashbacks, a swinging score by Ritz Ortolioni who did Cannibal Holocaust and an all-star Eurocult cast that includes Jean-Louis Trigiant from The Great Silence, Erica Blanc from Kill Baby Kill, Horst Frank from The Cat and Nine Tales, and Helga Lane from Nightmare Castle. Exclusively produced by Sergio Martino, who did The Violent Professionals, from a screenplay by Ernardo, Ernesto Gerstaldi from 2019, After the Fall of New York, this full-blown giallo classic is one of Lindsay's best, as described by B-Mania, and it's fully restored in a new 2K scan from the original negative. Now, the special features on this disc. If you got one of the early ones, like I did, you got a slipcase with new artwork from Graham Humphreys. This was limited to 1,000. Uh, a brand new 2K restoration from the original 35mm camera negative, a high definition 1080p presentation and 2 35-1 aspect ratio. LPCM English soundtrack, LPCM Italian soundtrack with the optional English subtitles. An audio commentary by Troy Holworth and Nathaniel Thompson, a brand new 2K restoration of the film from the original camera. Conceiving a giallo, an interview with writer Ernesto Gastaldi, Remembering Franco Bortari, uh, an interview with Francesca Bortari and Eugenio Ercolini. Italian credit sequences and the title credits as well, original trailer and a reversible sleeve featuring new artwork by Graham Humphreys and the original poster artwork. The technical specs in this one is region unlocked, which confused me before but confuses me even more now as to how this deal has worked out because the Vinegar Syndrome release or the Synapse, whichever one it is um, was also region unlocked so that's wholly confusing uh, the audio is LPCM mono, picture is 1080p HD 235.1 the runtime is 1 hour and 33 minutes approximately language is English and Italian subtitles in English, certification 18 so yeah, we covered this relatively recently. Um, in that box set, it scored relatively high, mostly because against Orgasmo, this one has a lot more fun going on in the, the Baker performance. Now, the Lindsay Baker box set contained four movies which covered the four film collaboration between the director and the actress. And what was kind of beautiful to look in that one overall as a collection is to see the versatility of... Baker as a performer, she played, you know, um, uh, mentally damaged individuals, uh, she played the victim, she played the, uh, essentially the antagonist, and uh, there was range there for sure, and her final performance, she she played something rather mad, a knife of ice, uh, which was which was kind of fun to see, but in this one here, you are ultimately getting what it says on the tin. This is a kind of retelling of the 60s classic Diabolique, um, even down to the fact that we're shooting this in Paris. I mean, this could have been shot anywhere, um, but we're setting this movie in Paris to set up the scenario, and it's it, kind of like it sounds. This is a, an idea of, uh, you know, a uh, kind of a husband having an affair and then trying to essentially uh, convince people that his his wife is damaged and thus get her out of the picture and things take a nasty turn and then the game is afoot as Sherlock Holmes would say. As Lindsay movies go, I mean this is not like early early in his career but this is before in some respects Lindsay became a bit jaded. Um... This is in his kind of Euro... I mean, the class in it is a giallo. It's more a kind of Euro uh, erotic thriller than it is necessarily an actual giallo itself. Um, you know, this is kind of pre-Bird with the Crystal Plumage and it isn't directly influenced in any way, shape or form by Mario Bava. So it kind of exists out with what we would class as the kind of linear timeline of, of giallo cinema. Um, and Lindsay would do some giallos in, uh, in the 70s and those are 
very sleazy movies. Um, and this one kind of has a bit of that kind of craft and a bit of that softness that at times Lindsay's maybe not given the credit for. He's a very, very, very versatile director. And in the case of this movie here, you can see that. it's Yes, it's, it's kind of riffing on a theme from a movie that was very, very, very popular and very well known, but at the same time, kind of holds its own weight, and that's mostly down to the powerhouse performances there within, but his choice of cinematography, you've only got to look at this as 69, and the space of, what, 11 years, he will have released Cannibal Ferox, so, you know, he's he, he goes through the ringer, in the 70s and then turns his hands to a lot of different things and then relatively gets quite sleazy and then before you know it, it has a reputation which kind of follows him towards the end of his career. Um, and this one here, we're still kind of, we're, we're working out what we can do and playing it smart and I think it's done very, very well. The Ritz Ortolioni score is, oh, it's chef's kiss, but Ortolioni is an incredible composer anyway. I mean, they mentioned Cannibal Holocaust there as a great shout. But, you know, he's, the, the, the dude's fingerprints are across some of my favourite scores from Italian cinema, not only in the 60s, but mostly predominantly through the 70s, where he really, to me, kind of levels up. Um, I mean, it's a short movie. It gets in, gets what it needs to do, gets out. Um, it has a very playful kind of wink at the camera, so to speak, right at the very end. In a way that I enjoy as well, I think its playfulness is one of the reasons it, it kind of stands out in the box set. It's, you know, it, it zips along, does what it needs to, um, not the most original thing, but at the same time, I, you know, it will it will entertain and enthrall for sure. And one that does have a degree of rewatch value, this was me watching this version some two and a half months after watching the, the, the kind of box set version that I had. And a movie like this, I generally wouldn't watch twice in a year because of that diminishing return on the second watch. But actually, this zipped along fine in a way that I, you know, found very entertaining, to be sure. A lot of the, the kind of benefit of this year is in the special features that come along with it. Now, this one isn't packed nearly as much as it probably should be. I get the feeling if you are going to have your version in a world where you can buy a box set version from America that will play in your UK player, you kind of really need to go out your way to differentiate and add more value to it. And this release is a little bit light on that. The audio commentary by Troll Holworth and Nathaniel Thompson, I had that on and off periodically through it because I've seen the movie recently. And once again, those guys bring the heat for sure. I mean, the movie looks, the restoration work looks fucking great you never guess the age of this movie uh, and that's incredible and i did enjoy the interviews um specifically the one with ernesto gastaldi who has worked with everyone and their auntie in the italian genre cinema if you if you like it's like six degrees of separation of gastaldi um his his kind of interview was really 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 fun the problem is that that's kind of about the highest value you're getting here. Uh, remembering Franco Botari is, I, I, I mean, it's an interesting overall interview, but that's really all you're getting here is a commentary track and essentially two interviews. And it kind of feels a little bit like you're being slightly shortchanged. I would love to have seen more in here, but you just, you're not getting it. And I, I kind of feels like a missed opportunity especially when I know that 88 films have done or did do a ton of interviews with Lindsay in the past I'm surprised this one never properly came up in discussion or they had archival footage or something they could have used here um it kind of feels almost a little bit like we're we're missing out on something it's a fun movie it's a really 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 fun movie um kind of coming back around to it this time I, I think it holds up really, 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 really well. I don't think it's necessarily the best of the kind of erotic thriller giallos out there. Uh, Perversion Story is one that I you know, genuinely have a lot of fondness for uh, by Filchi. Same year as well, I think that's 69. Um, and it is kind of fucking great. Um, and then there's a little tip by here, the fact that Sergio Martino, uh, a, a director who would very quickly 
what, a year, two years after this, start his run of four Jalo movies. It's kind of awesome to kind of see, like, the all the parts of the industry all Voltroning up together to, to, to become something kind of special. Uh, in terms of my, my, my grade for So Sweet, So Perverse, it's not really a Jalo as a Euro kind of crime thriller, erotic film. It's it's pretty good for what it does, but it is essentially just a retelling of something else, which is done a lot better. Uh, Leda Balik is a fucking phenomenal movie. So on this one, I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. Um, I would like to see more special features in here, but I understand that you can only, if you're a label, work with what you have at your disposal.